I have some quick sausage party questions. <laughs> Great. You came up with this idea when smoking weed with Jonah Hill. Um, I don't is know. Is that technically true? It's probably like, I mean, elements of that are probably, I don't know if so it that's, all happened. So that's an that apocryphal moment. story yeah. now? I think we were at dinner, actually. Okay. Like, I, we had probably smoked weed earlier in the evening, but uh, my wife actually, like, remembers the dinner. I have a terrible memory due to the fact I've ravaged my brain. Right. But I, I um, but my wife remembers the meal when we came up with the idea, basically, uh, which was, what if, what's the secret life of, like, what if food th also just thought that a good thing happened when it got purchased and then it found out that it gets eaten basically was the original idea and then it goes so out of your top 12 weed ideas where was this like and it was this one of the <laughs> it's one of the eight? best ones okay good. pretty much every idea we've ever had i've probably been somewhat stoned when we came up with it i mean if i had the idea after 1995 <laughs> <laughs> was this uh one of your goals to make this one of the first movies that used an erect penis in the movie poster yeah there was it's basically an erect penis <laughs> yeah there was a point where we we thought that it that literally we might not be able to market it that, that and and we also feared that the bun that the mouth maybe its uh, vaginal qualities would uh, would pr would prevent us from literally showing that character on television was something that we were afraid of at some point but is I that what you're calling it vaginal qualities it, it has looks like a qualities? vagina that's the that and i just used the gentlemanly way of saying that <laughs> but uh i think that ultimately because it's food we fell into some weird like like nexus or like loophole where they didn't quite know how to classify us i think and we got away with a lot of shit that i'm i'm shocked we were able to get away. Well, you got in the NBA Finals, which I thought was amazing. I know they had to have that guy. Game four is brought to you brought by, to sausage, you by party. sausage Party. I just pictured that guy in the booth being like, "Really? <laughs> this is what I have to really? Fuck, fine. Game four. <laughs> uh, lead characters are hot dogs, not sausages. I know it's hot dog okay. party. Just didn't have okay. the same ring to it. I'll, I'll admit that that was yeah. That makes no sense. Did you think about casting a known douche in Hollywood as the douche? Yeah, but, but we because there got, are some known douches. That there is, you could and have, Nick Kroll is not one of them. He's not right. Very, very nice man. But what Nick Kroll is is known for playing a douche, and he okay. has a great douche character. Who would who would be a known douche to cast? Do you I would think? have said Jeremy Piven would have been. Great. Yeah, he's, he actually. Yeah, that, I don't I know if if he actually is a douche, but he has a reputation of being. He a douche. plays a douche very very. Plays well. a douche. Yeah, could have easily been the douche. Yeah, uh, any honorage person could probably fit that role in some capacity. <laughs> See, this is where I work for HBO and I mm -hmm. can't say anything now. Uh, there's an X-rated food... Oh, I just trashed Honorage on HBO. That doesn't happen very often. Wow. <laughs> um, so, Freaks and Geeks, it's one of the most famous canceled too soon shows. Yeah. What happens to you if it doesn't get canceled too soon? What happens if it's on for like six years? I know. It would have been really interesting. Is that better or worse for you from a career standpoint? Um, I think it's impossible to say. Like, it's debatable, I but think. But that's what like, I like. I'm a sports yeah, fan. I like yeah, what ifs. Yeah, what ifs. I like, uh, I like pretending what the alternate universe There is. was a few years ago. I remember the, the, I was with Franco, and we were like, this is the year our contracts would have ended on Freaks. Oh, yes. Yeah. Like, I don't remember what we were making. It might have been Pineapple Express or something like that. It might have been while we were filming that, that we were like, if the show kept going, they would have had us until now, basically. Yeah. They would have owned you. Yeah, they would have owned us. And in that time... Time, Siegel went on to make Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Franco had gone on to become like a massive movie star and yeah. get nominated for Academy Awards. You know, I was able to get some movies made. Linda Cardellini had found a lot of success. Like almost everyone had gone on to like, you know, to to the things that they now do. And and I remember thinking, like, oh, that's funny. Like they would have owned all of us right. like, up until like not, you know, during all that time, basically. Um but it was, it's not surprising. I feel like it was a show that when I look at it, it fits much more in with today's TV climate than... That's the you irony, know, right? It would have like, been, yeah. It would have been the ultimate streaming show. People it really would have binge watched yeah. it, and it really holds up. I think that's why it's yeah. so popular now, is because I think because it, it even when it was made was nostalgic and not set in its time. It has like a timeless quality to it because it never was like referential to the time when it was made. It's one of those things, you know what's funny? And I bet it, this is like how it is with a lot of young people. When I was a kid, I didn't get Happy Days was made like 20 years after it took place. I thought Happy Days was a show that was set when it was made. Right. 
and I didn't, because it was all just old shit to me, and I didn't get like, oh, there's different categories of old shit, like, like that was like the doo-wop phase of the old shit, and it was made during like the hippie phase of the old shit, right. I didn't get that, but, and I bet there's a lot of kids who think Freaks and Geeks was made when it's set, and don't get that when we made it, it was actually like set 12 years before that, basically. Yeah, there hits yeah. a point where you just think that was before That was me. old, yeah, really hey, who fucking knows, yeah. And it makes me wonder like what old movies I like that are not set, like Animal House is another one of those movies I didn't get was True. set in a different time than it was made until Years and years and years and years after I had been watching it. Whereas cruising, you know, is 1980. Exactly. Yeah, That's it. 100%. <laughs> uh, one of the things I love about your movies, they capture what it's like when guys just hang around, hang out with each other and bust each other's balls. Yeah. Which wasn't in movies enough. And that's one of the reasons I love Swingers and yeah. Good Will Hunting. Like, certain male body type of movies had that. Your movies always have that. Who's responsible for that? Is that you? I honestly Who's think, generating that? Uh, it's all of us. I, th I mean, it's me and Evan. Like the the dialogue, I think that is in a lot of our movies is heavily, in, you know, inspired by just the first dialogue we started writing when we were writing Super Bad. And yeah, and our whole thing when we started writing Super Bad is like we don't see movies with people who talk the way us and our friends talk. Right. Who, have the sick, weird conversations that we were having. And probably the closest we were seeing to it were movies like Swingers and Clerks we were a huge Clerks fan a of. One, yeah. We love Kevin Smith. And so it was those movies where we were like, oh, they're talking about Star Wars in the movie. They're right. talking about, they're playing video game. Like I remember in Swingers, it has the scene where they're playing Nintendo. And I was like, oh, like that is like exactly what we do is you talk shit and you play video games with your friends. and. Those were like the first time. Yeah, times. like the scene when when they pause it for the delivery man. Yeah, exactly. And, and the guy unpauses it. Oh, yeah. fuck that guy. Yeah, that was the worst moment. That's when you knew that guy was not a good guy. Right, right, right. <laughs> It was a very telling moment. How much longer does you, your genre that you've done, and I don't know what you would call the genre, but it's definitely a certain era of yeah. movies. And now it's, it's past the 10-year mark. Yeah. How long does that genre last? Do you worry about that? Oh yeah, we talk about it a lot. Like we are not um, <laughs> like in the dark about how the environment of movies are changing and how how politically correct people are compared to ten years ago. All that stuff. That I actually don't find to be something that we're up against. And okay. I think like I think if you're smart about it, and as long as you're aware of the environment that you're in, then you yeah. are able to make as daring or controversial a statement is as you ever were you know you just have to maybe put a little more thought into it because there's a few more hurdles you have to jump over to get there yeah. i think but i actually haven't found that when we write we're never like oh wish we could you know say these horrible things that were acceptable in the 90s right, that are right. no longer acceptable yeah, yeah. if anything you just make jokes about that like you embrace that and make that the conversation you know what i mean um the south park guys really did that brilliant yeah they're season. so good at it yeah um and but what i do think is just like mid-budget comedies are a lot harder to get made now and like what we make is like 20 to 30 million dollar Com like I think super bad would be really was hard to get made then but would be really hard to get made now That's true. like and I don't know if it would be successful if it came out. You have now. to make them comic book heroes. Yeah, exactly, because it would be up against Spider Man and shit like yeah. that. And I honestly, like, at that time, and like 40 year old version is like, I don't know if that movie would come out now and be really successful because it it's a very small movie at the end of the day. It takes place in like apartments and in a TV store right. and like on a street. Like, there's not like huge set pieces to it. There's not like big, a like now the types of comedies, a lot of them that do well are like big action comedies or big like genre movies, which is very much why we started making like this way, right? like where this is the end came from. And, and it's where Sausage Party came from because we were like, we have to try to do something different. We can't just keep making, you know, and we've tried, like, The Night Before, I think, falls into that category of, like, a movie that maybe 10 years ago would have done a lot better. And I think it's a really great movie, but I think in this environment, it feels very small in some ways, you know, um, because it's up against these giant things that just didn't exist when we were making Knocked Up and 40-Year-Old Virgin and stuff like that. They were just starting, but it wasn't like, there wasn't, like, seven of them a summer, you know?